Awesome. Welcome, everyone, to this week's Global Intelligence Updates webinar. And we've got a special guest, Eugene van Omerwe, joining us from South Africa. Welcome, Eugene. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks to everyone for joining. Hope I can uh, maybe share some wisdom and be slightly entertaining. Yeah, no, definitely. So um, for those that don't know who Eugene is, Eugene is, a, is the co-founder of the Van Studios Digital Agency, owns retail outlets in South Africa, a tech hub, and a two international businesses. Eugene travels the world sandboarding in Dubai, hiking the Rockies in Colorado, and surfing in California while drinking wine in the winelands of France, all while business operates and grows. That's such a, a, an awesome bio, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's a part of life. I think um, Mike mentioned it the one time he said, what is the stuff that's actually real? And then we talk about love and experiences and or kids, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that stands out for me is experiences. What is one of the, or the purpose of life is to create happiness and create joy and, and serve your purpose. And, I think a big, big part of it is having experiences. I, mean, I yeah. think most people are on this drive to make money. And what's the reason for you to create wealth? Yeah. It's to live a life that serves you. And uh, I think I was uh, fortunate that I could discover that on an early age, that uh, some of the stuff that gives me a lot of meaning in life is having experiences. And um, yeah. just going to cool places and traveling the world and seeing different cultures and different beliefs. I think it opens up our paradigm extensively when you grow up in this in South Africa and you live with a certain beliefs and then you travel to other countries and they have different beliefs and it doesn't affect it. Yeah. And then you think, well, I'm also stuck to my beliefs. It's a, uh, but yeah, so it's um, really cool that I'm and very fortunate to be in a position where I can do that. Yeah, no, that's uh, very well said, Eugene. And um, on that, I want to ask, you know, where did your journey start? Can you give us a little bit of, of feedback on that? Yeah, so um, I'll give you the shortened version. I uh, basically finished school, wanted to study electronic engineering. And um, due to financial constraints, aka my family being poor, <laughs> I couldn't afford to go study. So I got like a part bursary but I couldn't get anyone to go sign my student loan. And um, through that process, I had a cousin in the UK and I flew to the UK. Before that, I've never been out of the country. And um, then through that process, that's when my, my passion for traveling started. And then fast forward, I came back and I started in an entry-level position, took a massive salary cut to go into the IT sector and um, through that, I realized that I need to generate some sort of side income for me to be able to sustain the lifestyle that I was uh, living at that point in time. And side hustles started making money and then side hustles turned into full-time business. And then um, I think the marketing journey started when I was about two or three years into my business and I realized I've grown out of my context because a business grows basically from the inner circle and then it grows outward. So your inner circle is the people you know, then there's people that they know, and then it grows out. And then I ran out of connections in my inner circle and then realized I need to start reaching people in a wider circle. And the obvious step for that is digital marketing. So I went to a couple of agencies and um, over the period of about two years, I spent about 300,000 rand on marketing, uh, specifically Facebook marketing. They rebuilt my websites and created e-commerce stores and an and, and. and I shifted in that two years to three different agencies and each time they just want to rebuild the website and the excuse for not generating results is they need more money, which I then gave them more money. And two years later, I sat in the very fortunate position of having absolutely zero additional clients after spending 300,000 rand on marketing. Being in the tech space, I then realized I need to figure this stuff out myself. I can't continue relying on someone else to do it. I've been to three different agencies. 
spent an absolute fortune on marketing and I still don't have any leads out of it. And uh, that stage, we were still building websites on Joomla. <laughs> so I got a Joomla course and built my first couple of websites on Joomla. And then um, as it progressed, Shopify launched and then and, and through that process, I started figuring out certain things that worked. And through figuring out the things that work, friends and clients started asking me, but can you assist me in doing the same? And then fast forward a couple of years, ran a, or now I'm running a full on digital marketing agency and we run um, one day courses and four day courses training other people how to run their own marketing. Because we end up going to a marketing company and say, here's my business, market my business. But your systems, your strategies, your customer journey, none of that stuff is set up. So you're not going to generate results out of it. So we want to show businesses and entrepreneurs and side hustlers what is the correct way to market so you can start out doing it yourself, probably generate better results than most agencies. And then once you reach a particular um, step in your business where you can then afford to pay someone a decent amount to run your uh, marketing campaigns for you, then you've already kind of figured out what works. Then it's just for them to scale what's already working because it is time consuming. Um, I don't think that anyone can't be taught how to do this correctly. I think the limiting factor is once you start scaling up to a certain level, you need to have someone full time running that for you or then outsource it. So yeah, that's where my journey started and I run full time uh, digital marketing stuff and the beauty of that is I can do it from anywhere. I don't need to be at a specific location to be able to do it, which then affords me to be able to travel a bit and work from other locations in other countries as well. Wow. Yeah, no, that's um, pretty awesome, Eugene. And um, I think one day I would like to hear the full detailed story behind that. Um, yeah. But maybe we'll do another session. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so touching base on what you just said, Having gone through all this experience and so forth, what would you say are the things that the companies are doing wrong? So I think from a digital marketing perspective, um, I uh, joked about it on my seminars. I said, we get married on the first date. So uh, no one goes out on the first date and say, hey, I'm Eugene, what's your name? No, I'm Krizal or whatever. Hey, Grizel, pleased to meet you. Listen, I don't have time for this whole dating thing, so can we just get married and, and carry on with our lives? So that type of stuff isn't going to work in real life, yet we do it online. We go to our customer, put an ad on Facebook to say, here's my high-level package, here's my number, call me if you want to join. So we want to get married with, to our customers on the first date and don't take the process of courting them. And building up trust and credibility. So uh, normally I ask the question is, who would buy a 10,000 rand ring of Wish? So you guys know Wish, the um, online platform, the Chinese website where you can buy all sorts yeah, yeah. of different things from little stickies to wedding rings to a full house. You can even buy a full house on uh, Wish. I saw that. <laughs> so who would buy a 10,000 ring on Wish? Most of the time, the answer is no one. Yet, would you buy a 10,000 ring off Take A Lot or off Amazon? And in those cases, probably 50% of the people say, yes, I would. Now, what's the difference between the two? The one has taken time to build up trust and credibility over a period of time to establish that trust from you that if I purchase this, I am going to receive the value that I'm expecting. And if I don't, I've got a response or I've got a return process. Now, when we look at it from your business perspective, let's say, for example, you do coaching and we specialize in coaches, speakers and trainers. We help them run events and then scale up their business. So we see this on a regular basis. A coach comes in and we say, okay, cool. What is your customer journey? How does someone start working with you? Like, no, here's my package. It's only 1,000 rand a year. Okay. And before that, no, no, that's my old package. So now I expect someone who's never heard of you, they don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. At this point in time, you are the similar version of Wish to them than what Wish is to you. 
Now expect them to spend 100,000 Rand on Wish. It's not going to happen. So what is the customer journey? So number one would be setting up a customer journey. What is your low-level package? What is your entry-level? So the first step is awareness, building a community. The second step is converting a lead into a buyer. There needs to be some sort of transaction that takes place. And that's an entry-level product. It's not there to make money. It's just to create a transaction. The fastest way to build trust and credibility is let someone purchase something from you. And from there on, you can then start upselling them into your different packages. So that would be uh, quite a big one. The other thing I see a lot of guys do that come on to our training and, and become customers of ours is they are still boosting posts. So that is a big no-no if you're doing that. <laughs> Please don't. That is kind of Facebook's lottery where you uh, keep playing, but you don't win. Um, <laughs> so the process of, of that is going to set up, if you're running on um, Facebook or Instagram, go and set up a business manager. You can do that through business.facebook.com and you can set up a business manager. And then um, if you're running TikTok ads, for example, TikTok's also got the business manager. So you create a business manager. It's exactly the same as Facebook. Process is the same. Some of the naming conventions are different, but otherwise than that, it's exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say those are the three things is um, build up trust and credibility with your customers. Uh, have a journey for them to go through. Don't get married on the first date. And then... Um, the last one is run ads. If you're running paid ads, do it through Business Manager. Okay, cool. Thanks, Eugene. That's very insightful. Um, I saw a lot of people picking up the pens on, on that note. Um, yeah. yeah, no, very cool. <laughs> so, so on that, I was actually going to ask you, you know, what would be the solution? And you answered the, the question beforehand. What would you say um, are the things that are currently working then? Yeah, so something that's really working, um, that's a bit difficult to answer if I uh, don't get the engagement. I don't know if you can maybe pop up your hand on the reaction thing. Who of you are currently running paid ads on Facebook? Um, so if you want to maybe just pop up the stuff. So at the moment, Facebook is still the preferred platform. Your cost per conversion is higher than, um, oh, is lower than most of the other platforms. Uh, TikTok is also doing really well at this stage from a marketing perspective. And the funny thing about it is, number one, we run events and there's about 100 people per event that we run. Our next in-person event is next week, Tuesday or Wednesday. And we've got about 100 people there. The, the excuse is that my customer is on Facebook. Even if you're dealing with a large corporate, you still end up having that negotiation with a person sitting across the table from you. It's still a person. And that person still needs to know you, like you, and trust you. So when we um, run this ads, then they say, oh, but my customer isn't on Facebook. Then we sit with a room full of business owners. We say, who of you in the last week have been on Facebook browsing? And basically, every single person sticks their hands up. So every single person is on Facebook. So it's still, your customer is there. You just need to know what is the strategies that is going to entice them to start building a relationship. Remember marketing offline and online. There's no difference to it. Whether you're doing sales in person or you're marketing online, there's no difference. Except marketing online, you can't shake someone's hand. So it's even more important to build up their trust and credibility. And otherwise than that, it's about going through the process of meeting someone, finding out what is their problems. How can your product serve them and solve their problems? Because that's what business is about, is about solving problems. So uh, number one is everyone's on Facebook. Number two is most people that um, General consensus is that TikTok is for 13 to 16-year-olds or something like that. Yet we sat in this room, and at our last conference, there wasn't anyone under 30. Everyone was 30 till about 50. And we asked them, who of you has a TikTok account and that's active on your TikTok account? 
and probably about 60% of the room stuck their hand up. So here's a room of 30 to 50 year olds and more than half of them are active weekly on TikTok. So TikTok is not just for the young generation, it's a misconception. And TikTok, because it's such a new platform, your cost per conversion is a lot lower, number one. Number two, they've got a lot less legality. So if you're running MLM or weight loss or uh, financial industries, those type of things, you can still market it on TikTok. We can't do that anymore on Facebook. Oh, wow. So while I'm mentioning that, the two things that's working extremely well at this point in time, Facebook Reels, number one. And remember when you do Facebook Reels, phone upright when you take the video. Anything else, phone sideways because you can cut off the sides. So if you shoot YouTube or normal Facebook stories or anything like that, phone sideways. If you're doing Reels, then up straight. So that's doing really well, number one. Number two, videos is doing exceptional. So if you're running for a bit more technical for the guys that are running proper Facebook ads, if you run videos for through plays, which then builds up an audience, then you retarget the through plays with a initiate checkout or complete purchase or complete registration event for your course or your webinar or your e-commerce store or your ebook or whatever it is. You retarget everyone that completed a video because videos are extremely cheap. You're paying about five cents for a through play, where for initiate checkout, you'll probably pay 30 to 100 bucks depending on your product. Um, oh. So tip for everyone, get comfortable using video. You need to have video as part of your marketing strategy. Sure. Yeah, very interesting, Eugene. Uh, I've, I've got another question to you on the social media. What, what is currently booming? You, you mentioned TikTok and Facebook. Is there any others that are potential in marketing, digital marketing? Yeah, so we've got our eyes open quite a bit for what's going to happen with Twitter, with uh, Elon Musk taking over. So I think yeah. that's something to... Uh, to keep an eye open, see a loud whole bunch of people that's been banned previously to come back onto the um, onto the platform. Um, and there's quite a few changes that he's making. So keep your eyes open for Twitter. I think that might be quite a big thing. Um, TikTok as well is definitely booming. Um, and then depending on your business, I would probably choose one platform. So if, if you're new to this, do Facebook. If you are selling in the fashion space and images and that sort of stuff is working for you, then Instagram is probably that. And then I'd advise everyone to start learning how to run ads on TikTok because that is going to be next. And then I think um, something that's quite in the mainstream at the moment is all the AI that's out. Yeah. Now, if you've been in marketing for quite some time, you know that AI has been around for like the last two, three years. It's kind of now that it's picking up because of chat GPT mostly. Um, but even your search algorithm on YouTube, for example, if you go into YouTube, it shows you all your most viewed and relevant videos. That's all AI-based. Um, everything you search online, it's all AI-based. So I think AI is new to the general public. And I my perspective is you need to be using it. If you're not using it, you are going to be left behind. So just some of the top ones that we're currently using, um, video is really cool, V-I-D-Y-O, um, for video creation, those type of things. Previously, you used to need a designer. Now, this is the beauty about AI. Now everyone can utilize it because it's simple. That's the next gen AI is everyone can use it. Things where you'd normally need an entire marketing team, you now need a couple of platforms to be able to run the stuff to. So video, for example, and many others, you can upload a video, it's like a selfie video. You upload the video, you tell it, I want 10 reels, I want 15 stories, I want this many of this and this many of this, and it spits it out for you within 10 or 15 minutes with captions, with taglines, with hashtags, in the correct format for each platform. And then you can use different things like Hootsuite, for example, where it then publishes the stuff throughout all the different platforms in the correct format. 
and then you can pre-schedule it. So by doing one or two videos, you can run it for probably three months. You've got three months of content where normally something like that would take you probably a week or two because you have to shoot the video, you have to edit it, then you have to edit it in different formats, you have to export the stuff, and then and now with so I see someone asked what's the platform's video, V I D Y O. Um, another one that's quite cool is Pexel, P E X E L. Um, we use that quite often. Uh, Dull E, D A L L E, um, for image creation. The number one for image creation at the moment for me is uh, Mid Journey. Um, so Mid Journey is very, very cool for um, image creation. You need to just specify your text. And then obviously uh, all the chat platforms like uh, ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT is really cool if you know what the correct prompt is. So for example, if you want to uh, write a script for your Facebook ads, you tell my journey, oh, um, ChatGPT, you are a marketing professional. You are running a one-day course that will teach people how to use digital platforms to scale their business. What is, or write Facebook ad copy to entice people to join your one-day course on the 12th of April at Safari Conference Center, for example. It goes and writes out your entire script that you can then kind of just read through, edit some of the stuff and paste it. You can tell uh, ChatGPT, so you're a marketing professional and you want to have 10 motivational quotes um, that you can put on Facebook that will build a brand for you. It will give you 10 motivational quotes related to digital marketing. Once you have those quotes, you can then say, okay, I like point number three. Please write a 200-word or 600-word or 1,000-word, I have a long script or blog on point number three. Then it goes right out your blog. Then it says, okay, for point number five, write me a video script that I can then do a video on and it writes out a video script. And all of this happens in the space of about three minutes. So within three minutes, you've got Facebook ad copy, you've got 10 motivational quotes, that if you use Canva, for example, you can upload it into Google Docs and pull it into Canva and it'll automatically populate 10 posts for you. So now you've got 10 posts, you've got Facebook ad copy, you've got a blog, and you've got a script for your video in three minutes. This would normally take us the entire day to do something like this. So what's next? AR is not about doing stuff that you can't do normally. It's about now you can do it in a tenth of the time that it would normally take you. And then um, I won't get too much into it, but the next stuff is AR and, and uh, voice is getting quite big. So your phone is constantly recording. So just to show you, my phone's completely off. There's nothing on my phone. Hey, Siri. And the city comes up at the bottom. How does it do that if it's not constantly listening to me? So now voice, the voice data, you can talk about, yes, I want to I wanna go to Mauritius next week. If I go into Facebook now, I'll start seeing posts of Mauritius. The next stuff is AR, where you can hold your phone and you want to buy a chair. You can put on your camera and drag the chair into the photo and see what it would look like in your eyes. Now, whose chair is going to be on the top? The person who's paying for it or the person who's not paying for it? And then, then. so there's a couple of different things. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. The main thing is um, probably chat GPT and mid journey and video would dramatically decrease your time that you need to spend on social to be able to generate the same amount of results. Because social is one of the most important things, consistency. If you want to build a brand, if you want to build your business through paid platforms, et cetera, consistency. The platform you use is less important than consistency. And the biggest obstacle to consistency is um, the time that it takes and the effort that it takes because now I need a script and I need to think about what I'm going to talk about and I need to edit my video and then that. And now with these platforms, 
you can dramatically decrease that time. Wow. Yeah, very interesting, Eugene, talking about all the AIs. I was actually going to ask you a question on that. And I mm. um, know yeah, you, you sorted that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the yeah. AIs can make a big revolution. And mm. one just an interesting fact is um, they talk about um, what's a guy that predicts that every 18 months uh, things double, not, um, I can't remember. But basically, every 18 months, for example, the size of our drive doubles in size. Okay. Now, that is with normal growth and technology change, the rate of change in technology has dramatically increased. Now, we've got AI developing AI. So now, instead of having this almost linear growth and we can predict the growth, now it's at a stage where we can't predict it. What is going to be available in 12 months from here, from now? Um, we don't know because there's so much AI that's developing other AI and they're all connecting to each other. You can, for example, I don't know if anyone's seen Microsoft's uh, new AI. No, no. Where, so that Microsoft invested, I think, a billion dollars into ChatGPT, but they've got their own AI where it connects to all your different platforms. So this is one of the next gens for AI, is they're going to be able to start talking to each other. So while you're doing a script, you can then move it on to. You can even copy a script into uh, voice software where you read a piece of your uh, voice, it gives you a prompt to read, and now it can reproduce your voice. So you copy text into the thing and it spits out a podcast in your voice. Sure. And you get the script from ChatGPT. So it's like ChatGPT, paste it into the voice thing, and then it does a podcast for you. The other thing is you take a video of yourself. So it gives you different prompts and you turn and you turn and then and, and, and you copy that voice with the script into uh, this AI software and it does your face on it, even though you're not behind the camera. So now you can create videos without you actually being in front of the camera. So there's so many different things, but the next step is having these things talk to each other. So you can take ChatGPT and say, write the script and connect to video and create a video, for example. Now, Microsoft is one that ties into your outlook. You can say, give me a summary of everyone sends all these emails up and down and you don't want to go through 10 or 20 different emails. You say, give me a summary. And I'll put it out in a summary. You can have a project plan where you can sit in a meeting, talk through a project plan, and then say, okay, take minutes of this meeting. Once a minute is done, say, create a project plan for me based on this minute. And after that, say, create a PowerPoint presentation to present this to the board next week. So just by having a meeting conversation, you get a summary of it, you get meeting minutes of it, you create a project plan, and you create a PowerPoint presentation. And you did nothing, you had a meeting with someone. Wow. So what's going to happen to productivity? Now, instead of needing 20 people to fulfill something, now you only need five. But the rate of growth that's available now to businesses is absolutely insane. Because now we can take this AI tools and instead of taking a year to produce a certain result, now we can do it in a month. So what is available to us from a growth perspective and from a progress perspective? So the guys that's going to adopt it, now instead of your growth being 10 or 20 or 30 percent, now you scale to 100 or 150 or 200 percent. And the guys that's not using it is just going to be left further and further beyond. Um, so I recommend everyone kind of just get on board with that. Um, just start learning, test one or two or three different platforms and start learning it. Um, I wouldn't get involved in everything because it's blowing up everywhere now and everyone's got their next best tool. Um, I'd probably pick two or three, get some videos, get some blogs out and uh, maybe get something like my journey that creates or pixel or dolly or something that creates nice uh, images for you. Awesome. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Eugene. I think that's um, such insightful information. Um, with, with everything that you spoke on with this webinar today, to sum up, 
What are the top three things that an average person can do today to make a change? Yeah, it's, um, so there's that concept 20% of your activities generates 80% of your results. What the color of your logo looks like, whether you post at nine o'clock or 12 o'clock, and, 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 and whether the writing should be at the bottom or the writing should be at the top, it doesn't matter. What matters is consistency and action. Um, I don't know if any of you know Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary V publishes videos, go and follow him on Instagram and YouTube and so on. Look at the quality of his videos. It's shaking, it's, some of it's blurred, it's out of focus, it's horrendous. So if you look from a video editing perspective, it's absolutely horrible videos. Yet he's got one of the biggest followings online. And we want to sit there and continuously edit and change and, and, and until it's perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. We actually see that authenticity is creating a much higher interaction rate than properly edited videos. So we've got a whole studio that's designed on here with lights on and all that sort of stuff. And we've got video editors and so forth. And the videos that's professionally edited gets a low level of interaction than me just taking out the phone, taking a selfie and talking about a thing. So we go through kind of like a four step, which we don't have time for today, but a four step perfect pitch. What is the way that you interact with your customers? And um, doing proper selfie videos is crucial. So just popping out your phone, keeping it sideways. Hey guys, my name's Eugene from Band Studios. And we are coaches, speakers, and mentors get in front of their customers, generate their customer journey, and then banking more cash. If you're a personal speaker or development speaker and you want to get on stage in front of your ideal customer, generate more sales and increase a customer experience, click on the link below and X, Y, and Z. So that's kind of the process that we follow when doing videos for our events starting off with what is the problem, what is your solution, and what is the call to action is very important. We don't have a call to action. But before that, we need to identify what is the problem that we're solving because all businesses are there to solve a problem. Health, wealth, relationships. Um, then I say, but my business doesn't fit into that. So all you guys probably know Gillette razor blades, right? So now you go to this Gillette razor blade and the guy standing there shaving. And then this beautiful girl comes up behind him and starts hugging him and kissing him. And what does the girl have to do with the razor blade? Yet she's there coming to hug him, which insinuates if I buy this razor blade, I'm going to get this attractive partner. So relationships, health, wealth, relationships. When you buy a car, when they sell a car, they don't sell a car based on the fuel economy of it or what tires it has on or what's the ride height of the car. It's about what is other people going to perceive you when you have this car? What is this car saying about your personality? Whether it's a BMW or Mercedes or Audi, they all get built by the same people. So at the end of it, it's about what is the expression of you? Health, wealth, relationships. I want to see mouth or successful or... Um, in a certain way. So everything comes back to that. And then uh, I think something else that's coming up is legacy. Everyone wants to build a legacy. We're working our butt off to create this business. We're earning less than what we would have earned if we out in the market building a career. We're working harder. We've got less time, less freedom, less money, which is all the reasons why we started the business is to have more of it. And the concept behind it is that I build up something of value, that I build up some sort of legacy. And the reality is most business owners spend 10 years and reach a place where they're still running a one-man show that has got no value. So what is my takeaway from this is build a customer journey. If you can start creating this community of like-minded people who trust you, who know you, who love you, who then become raving fans of your business or your product, you never have to sell anything. If you continuously add value, build a community, add value to that community, 
and then have an entry-level product that moves a lead into a buyer that creates a, a transaction. If you have that in place, your business will change. The reason most people don't do it is it takes a year to do that effectively. They say, oh, I'm not going to do it a year. Five years later, you're still in the same place. But if you just did that five years ago, your business would be in a total different space. Imagine you've got 10,000 raving fans that loves your business. Whatever product you put out, you never have to sell. You just let them know, hey, guys, this is my next step. How I can serve you. Because that's what a business is there, solve a problem, which is serving your customer. And that is what sales is about, is serving your customer. Yeah. So um, <laughs> one of the other takeaways that I just want to mention is creating a customer journey. Please don't get made on the first date. Go through the process of what's so called the sales funnel, which I think is overrated because we immediately think about this thing where I can't stop clicking on everything. Um, so it's not a sales funnel, it's a customer journey. So if you're a coach, for example, I'll use that as an example because we work with coaches and trainers and speakers. If you have your product, first build a community, you create your brand, have some sort of place where people can reach out to you and connect with you. Then the next step is create like an online debriefing session or maybe a group coaching session or something like that. Or um, ebook or a, uh, online course or whatever it is. Something that is scalable without taking up too much of your time. Then from there, you move them onto your next platform, which would maybe be, call it a $200 or $500 type of platform. Then from there, you move them up to add a zero, just keep adding a zero, to a $2,000 to $5,000 type platform. And from there, you can move it up to your high-end package. And through that process, you can then move the customer, building up trust and credibility, providing value, and then they will automatically come to you and say, what is the next step? I'm ready to take the next step. What is available to me? And then very, very important. This is probably the most important thing for everyone. Your customer only wants to know one thing. What is my next step in working with you? It's so all they need to know. They don't need to know about your family history or your 20 different products that you have or how long you've been in the business or what your story is or anything like that. They only want to know what is my next step. Just one. What is my next step? So when we present the courses, we then move them to a mastermind, which is a $200 a month package. Then we say your next step is join this mastermind. I don't tell them we can do videos and we can do your posts and we can create compelling stuff and we've got coaching services and we've got a high-end mastermind or we can do the marketing for you and, 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 and. We only give them one option. There's a $200 per month mastermind package. That's it. And then once they're in there, then you can say, okay, what is your problem? How can I serve you? This is my problem. Cool. To solve that problem, here's the solution. So very important. The only thing your customer wants to know is what is the next step in doing business with you? Awesome. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you for sharing so much knowledge and uh, mm. there's so much more we can go for hours <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a lot to it uh, i think if we stay, stick to the principles then just follow the system create a community have a lead to a buyer only provide them one thing don't get married on the first date and add value if you can't just follow that system which ai or what platform or anything becomes irrelevant doesn't matter awesome no, that's great. Um, is there any questions for Eugene? I think he pushed us with some great information. And um, you guys are more than welcome to rewatch on um, the links that will be shared on the Facebook groups. Yeah, well, um, at the moment, all our events is, um, so it's full day events. It's unfortunately only in-person events here in South Africa, in Pretoria. Um, probably late in the year, we just feel that um, these half day or one day type of webinars after, especially after COVID where everything was online, people are looking for that personal interaction. So even for your business, if you're doing something, I think people are moving back to wanting to shake someone's hand. They want to sit in front of someone 
um, on the other side of the table. So for now, we're doing that late in the year. We might start launching out like full day or half day online presentations and I'll let everyone know and then you can join that. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Eugene. And thank you for everyone joining the session. We had a, a great session today. Yeah. Hope you guys have Thanks, a guys. great day. Thanks, Hoppy. Thanks, that's it. Thanks, everyone. And the bow made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Eugene. Thanks, Chris. Good.